Welcome to Angels Don't Lie. I'm your host, Jeannie Street, and I'm so happy to have you here, and I appreciate your time and energy. Today's episode is going to fill you with the frequency of love. So I'm so excited to give you this inside look inside of my Soul Shine group. This past week, we had a remarkable session about coming back into the frequency of love and what it looks like and how how we can start to identify with the times when we aren't in the frequency of love. It's really, really powerful. I know you're going to love it. So just sit down and sink in. Saying yes, God, yes, is what you're going to notice about this show. This week on Sunday, August 14th, I am actually doing an amazing thing. I said, yes, God, yes, I will do an art show. I will display this art of all these beautiful paintings that I have been pouring my heart and soul into. And that is happening Sunday at the Silo in New Milford. So if you're local to Connecticut, please check it out. Send me an email if you need directions. And I hope to see you there because it's going to be amazing. I also have a free complimentary event that I'm doing on Wednesday, August 17th, Communicating with Heaven, where I will guide you in entering your light room in heaven where you can communicate with angels. It's going to be really amazing. Again, it's complimentary at the silo, part of their Survivor to Thriver series. And I'm really excited. And the last amazing thing I have for you is on August 20th, which is next Saturday, is the Empath and Sensitive Soul Masterclass. We're just about sold out. And I'm really excited because I'm going to bring it, man. I'm going to bring all of the amazing energy that is really going to support you in identifying what is yours and what's another's. And then how to set yourself up for success so that you can enter the world in a brand new way, in a clear way, knowing how to work through energy, how you're channeling and how you're receiving. It's going to be amazing. It's a full day experience and I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys there. You can check out the information on my website at geniestreet.com. So lean in and here we go. Enjoy this episode. catch and release is having the system that works. The system that works is we meditate every day. God said, meditate on my word. He said, pray to me, come to me, speak to me. So it's in our relationship that we start to have more of a connection. We hear him, we feel him, right? When, when we're out of this in here, we aren't going to hear God. We are going to judge. We're going to be critical. We're going to be on all that lower frequency but when we're in the higher frequency it is the common thing to hear god it is the common thing for you to receive that intuitive guidance it is the common thing for healers to get the messages from the heavenly realm and the story it's how you channel it's how you you do all your great work but it seems so it's limited right it's only limited to like well that felt really good but now my life is this or i have to do this so when we're speaking of t- in terms of radical abundance, what you're claiming, what you're saying yes to, then it also comes with just a little bit of a requirement. It's catch and release. Can I catch the things that no longer serve me? Can I catch looking for proof that it's not working? And can I release that? Can I, can I start having more faith? Can I, can I lead my faith as the one and only thing that's the most important thing. If I lead with faith, then faith has my back. If I lead with faith, then love will be the consistent. Love will be the, it cannot not follow you. So I went in this really, really amazing retreat. I did, I said yes to myself. Yes, God, yes. You know, he brought this thing in front of me and I did it. 
really uncomfortable, uncomfortable in so many ways. And I know you all know this, right? Because we have our storylines, we have our things and, you know, we put the cloak on, <laughs> we put it on and it's like, and I said, oh, you know, what would it be like to just admit to myself instead of going through the process of looking for my answers to just admit this is what I want and this is what I'm going to do. So I said, yes, full way, did everything, did the whole thing the way I wanted to do, the way I would ex want to experience it. And it was really, really great. And while I was there, um, my mentor coach, she said, it's a really cool thing. It's a really, it's a fact. Your body is, your body is the battery. And I was like, okay, my body's the battery. Tell me more. Tell me more. I know this. I know this. We're frequency. She said, so your feet on the ground is how you're holding charge. And I know this, right? We, t we talk about the energy centers. We talk about our Christ points. We talk about opening up the lower root chakra. And owning our place here on earth. And she said, and then, you know, your, your head, your third eye is you're receiving. So when you're not in, this is the plus and this is, you know, the negative. So if you're not, if you're not equally charged, if you're not in heaven and on, on the earth and you're in full receivership, you're, you're not going to receive. If there's a block between your battery and you're not charging by going into heaven, by, by releasing, by doing prayer, you can stand on this earth and feel completely lost. You can have experiences without, without them being the ones that you want to have, the ones that are really meant for your soul. I really like this. I thought, wow, that's really powerful. You know, we all hear it in our own way. And, you know, because I'm hard of hearing, I hear it in my own way. Um, but that really spoke to me. And I was like, I love this so much because it's so powerful for me as a healer to teach and stand in my own presence. What does it feel like to be in my presence? I'm gonna share with you a little, a little thing before I actually said, yes, God, yes, to attending this amazing experience. I had a moment where I witnessed how I was enabling and people pleasing and how I was waiting. And I do it in a very interesting way. Uh, because I'm energy sensitive, right? And being energy sensitive means I was waiting for the energy um, that my husband carried. I was waiting for the energy around things to show me it was safe, safe to say yes, safe. Like, is it safe? I was waiting for the feeling to come to me so that I would claim it. And I was like, that is so interesting wow, that is really like how I lower my frequency is off of a feeling. I wait to see it in the body, not, not physically. So this was a, this is a really huge awakening for me. Like, I love this. This is such a big healing, right? That God brought forward. It's like, okay, so yes, you have these cool gifts and you can feel, 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 but what if you claim it on the very first thing? What if you just said, yes, God, yes. In the moment, because you felt it immediately and not waited for the outside world in any way, shape or form to say, this is, this is right. This is wrong. This is where, this is who, this is why. And I was like, okay, that's, that's brilliant. Because that's how I get from my moment to the moment I'm creating, the moment that I'm co-creating. If I'm co-creating, I'm not doing it on my own. If I'm co-creating and saying yes, isn't hurting someone else. And as healers, we don't want to hurt other people. But what ends up happening is we give our energy and we really do, we mess, we mess with people and they don't get it. They, they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you, right? You're all over the place or because they're not understanding all you're trying to do is love on them more than you're loving on yourself. And it never works. It never works. So loving on yourself first, is gonna look like a radical confidence. It's a God, Godfidence, right? It's you and God together. It's holiness, holiness. So you're getting to be holy and make these decisions based off of what your body feels. So it takes, it takes a little compassion. It takes a little bit of uncomfortableness, being discomfortable in, in, a, in an energy for a hot second. It takes sitting with yourself. How do I 
come into my body to feel safe to say this. And so that's kind of what I've been practicing for the last three months was coming into that before I said, yes, God, yes, to this experience. You know, three months ago, I was like, hmm, this is really cool. I'm going to, I'm going to move in this way and I'm just going to smile and wave. And if I'm smiling and waving, then how it's going to be received is totally different. I'm not waiting for an approval in any way, shape or form in my body, in the energy, in anything. And so automatically I'm just saying, yes, God, yes. I'm saying yes to me. I'm loving me. It's giving me more room to pour in of like, oh this is how I can show up even better for my people. This is how I can raise my frequency to help them raise theirs. If I'm like this, which is my true state, wow, that, that's me really claiming I am who I am. I am that I am. I am that I am, right? Who, who are you claiming to be? And emotions are a beautiful way of expressing in a lot of ways. It's expressing what we feel. It's expressing happiness, joy, sadness, sorrow, right? And so if you're stepping into this new space, not familiar, right? This, this space of confidence, of ease, of non-judgment to this place of I am love, I am, and that the rest is coming and it's just peace that I'm seeking because the rest is automatically, like you've already seen it, you've already felt it, like God doesn't lie. Like those postcard visions are real. And so if you are a match for it, all you need to do is to fill up your cup. So you being here is filling up your cup. And this is just you resonating with love because we think it's literal, but filling up the cup is a pause, right? It's a hand on the heart and the belly. It's a hand to the heavens. It's feeling the most incredible moment that you've had in your life so far. It's a remembrance because you've already experienced it. You've just forgotten it. And you remember more the bad. We remember the shit times over the good times because that's how we're wired. So when we're, when we're you know, talking about neuroplasticity, we're talking about the brain and how it's going to shift and how it's going to change. And we start creating new healthy habits and we're meditating and we're talking to God. The body's going to start catching up to this. The body's going to start releasing old emotions because See, it's not being triggered by the energy or the feelings as often. And so those emotions are going to come up and they're going to rise and it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to look at it. You're going to face it. You're going to be like, wow, this is so old school. This doesn't really match who I am now because you already had a radical acceptance. You stepped into, I am a healer. You're just like catching up with the energy. It's like, I'm a healer. And what you're doing is people pleasing, but they cannot be on our party line until we fully are embodied because they, they can't be, and it's, they just can't, you have to be embodied in it. And when you're embodied in it, they will see it, they will know it. And they will be like, wow, I want some of that. Even if they don't understand it, even if they don't understand, they're going to be like, oh, that's some juice. Look at, look at that. Look at her energy. Like they're going to notice your energy before they notice anything else. All you have to do is to be in the frequency of the healer. And the healer is joy. The healer is love. It's a grace. It's purity, right? So in that matching of it, if you can remember a moment, this is what helped me in the very beginning when I started to change the frequency I was living in. I, I started picking moments that brought me that most joy that I could remember that I, where I was smiling because that was a really big thing, right? Because I didn't smile. I teach myself to be safe outward instead of closed off and where I would be smiling and I would be just filled with all of life. And so I picked moments that I return back to when I can't get there for maybe I'm in public or maybe I'm really like sad, maybe something big has happened. And then I just put my hand on my heart and on my belly and I call it in and I'll go through the entire scene until you are holding that resonance, until you are holding that energy as if it's normal to wake up with that smile on your face, like, oh, Wow. Because what you'll notice if you do that every single day is that good is coming. Joy is coming. You are a match. The more you do it throughout the day, and I have God timers on my phone, 1111, uh, 333, 3, 3, God is great, 444, 4, 4, I am divine, I am. So I set God timers. And God timers is a moment that you just bring that one thing, that one memory 
again, until it becomes normal for you to breathe and remember it quickly, that is going to be how you raise your frequency consistently and stay there. This is prayer. This is you and God in remembrance of good. This is you seeing God in the world where you live, in your life. This is holiness. It can definitely be a challenge. I'm not going to, you know, make it like it's not when the world around us isn't supported. So I kind of want to caution you on, and I always say this like an angel healer training and stuff, like when we start stepping into a new role, it's going to be met with resistance in the outside world because you may feel, whoa, but they're going to be like, what? Because they're used to you, your people, mm -hmm. your peeps are used to be you being in a frequency that's not mm -hmm. as high. Know that you're teaching them by showing, not telling. You're teaching them that on a daily basis, you're willing to move up into this heavenly state. You're willing to go to the heavens to be there, to hold as much love as you can so they feel it and they know it. And they too will make their own journey. They too will make their own journey. It is not up to you to make them go on that journey or tell them how to. You hold your people in your circle and you bring them up with you. We don't leave, you know, I have this saying, like, I don't leave anyone in, I leave them in a better state than I found them. That's my goal. Like a camp, you know, uh, uh, Girl Scouts, you know, leave the place better then you found it. Well, yeah, I'm going to do that with my people. Everybody that's going to come in, I'm going to leave them better in some way, shape or form. And so you're going to do that with your family, but just in a new way, an energetic way. We don't want to reintegrate the low frequency, um, but that's a challenging thing to kind of explain because how we reintegrate, well, I have my own actions and behaviors. You're going to have your own set, right? Mm -hmm. But it's recognizing, oh, wow. I can see that that isn't something I want to stay in and that you walk in peace and joy and you go out and you share your light. Amen, amen, amen. All right, my loves, I hope that this catch and release method, this idea that you can release the lower frequency to stay in the frequency that you are choosing in that love vibration really stays with you. Try it out, work with it, play with it because that's the fun of it. Don't forget, if you need details about the art show, send me a message at genie at geniestreet.com. And if you want to register for any of the upcoming amazing workshops I have, it is at geniestreet.com. So I will see you next time here on Angels Don't Lie. And you know I know what I know. Because angels don't lie. Have a gorgeous day. God bless you.